Hi, I'm Sinead Finnegan and you're listening to In Conversation With. How are we gentlemen? We were out last night. Don't make it like that we're unprofessional. We were. Yeah. We were, uh, but we were actually visiting former guests of ours. Um, yeah, the two, do you know, are you familiar with the two Johnnies? Yeah. Yeah, they were playing Wheel. Yeah. They had their Christmas party last night. They were playing so, um, last night. The guys came on our podcast last year. Um, so we like, we like to support them. We went to their live podcast a couple of months ago, or whenever it was. Yeah. And um, we had a great time. Uh, we didn't go to Coppers, so no. hence why we're a bit fresher this morning. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> Relatively so. Um, and today we're joined by Dublin Lady Senior Footballer and also DCU alum and employee and current student, uh, Sinead Finnegan. You take a lot of those boxes, yeah. uh, Sinead, don't you? I think I really like DCU, but yeah. I don't know that much. <laughs> you must. And um, before we get in, underway with the interview, a uh, big thank you to uh, Director of Alumni Relations, Ross Munley, for setting the interview up because he was the one that actually got like suggested that I get in touch and stuff like that. Cheers, so Ross. He's, uh, he's kind of helping us out a little bit with getting guests and things like that. Perfect, so. um, but yeah, Sinead, I'll, I'll start like I always do. And what was the first thought when I approached you asking to be on the show? Um, I, I, don't, I can't remember, Jesus. I don't know. <laughs> there was no hesitation yeah, anyway. Yeah. Um, I'm always happy to help, particularly as I was a DCU student once upon a time doing my undergraduate and now I'm back. So it's always good to have mm. someone to give a helping hand with things when you need. Sure, we'll, we'll get on to the, the playing career first, but we'll start with DCU, I suppose. So you came to DCU and you studied, it was business and Irish? Yes, yeah, so I did the Fionter course, so I was going to go so I did that for four years now. Must admit, I probably wasn't the best student. Um, I was more here for playing football than, than going to college, but somehow managed to pass. And um, yeah, then won an O'Connor Cup with DCU, which was great crack. Yeah, very nice. Um, so. But yeah. And what was it about these that brought you to DCU then? Um, I'm not going to lie, it was nothing specific mm. to do with DCU. It was more the fact that I didn't want to go to UCD because it was a million miles away from where I'm from. <laughs> right, so yeah. I'm from Swords and just the, the thought of the, the trek to there. UCD was yeah. just not very appealing. So um, I didn't really know what I wanted to do when I was, you know, around leaving cert time. So I just thought I actually started doing a business course before I did the Gnoak Squailga and um, it's quite a large course and I found like I was a bit lost in it so I ended up changing I went to an all Irish primary school and after a few weeks decided to just change to the smaller course so um, it was more the, the commute was less taxing than and then the, I saw that you did a, a postgrad in my home county of Waterford yeah I did yeah I spent a year living in Dungarvan which was great crack so I spent some trek to WIT every day then we actually didn't have to go to WIT oh, only on okay. Fridays so the course was based in um, a television production company um, which was in Ring, which is a great yeah. oh, yeah. area. Yeah. Just I nearly got sent garbage. there as a child. Uh, <laughs> and my, my mom it wouldn't used be the to best squares up now, I wouldn't say, because no. there's not much going on there. But no. um, so yeah, but we only had to go to college in DC or in WIT on Fridays. But every other day, we were in the production company Nemeton. You might know them. They do oh, yeah. have sports for teaching yeah, powers, yeah, yeah. so we were based there. So yeah, it was great. And um, was my first experience living away from home, and I had a great time. <laughs> yeah, that's not as bad then, because like Wolf or Dungarvan, like. I know, I know there's one bus that takes you from Dungarvan to WIT, but yeah. that is a, a yeah. fair trip. How, how was the uh, adjustment of moving to Waterford, living by yourself? Um, I actually was living with a girl who did the journalism course through Irish here, so oh. I knew her. Um, and then two other girls, one from Dublin and one from Limerick, and we, were, we all got on really well, so we had a great time. And because the course was quite small, everyone was really close, we used to have parties in our house a good bit and that, but uh, it was great. Like I, did, I loved being away from home, but... Um, I was meant to come back up for training and stuff, but that kind of went out the window after. Out in Dungarvan, yeah. <laughs> Dungarvan's good for the social scene. Yeah, the, 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 the what brought you back to DCU then? Um, so for the last like five and a half years, I've been working in um, a sports PR and sponsorship agency called Teneo PSG and very busy like really exciting they're, they're like the biggest kind of in Ireland aren't they they're yeah. kind of considered like yeah they're yeah they're definitely one of the biggest um they've got like big clients like ARG and I just put Borgash Energy mm -hmm. used to work with Under Armour Subway just, just Vodafone loads of them so um got to meet like loads of kind of sporting people over um the course of time that I worked there but why did I come back to DCU I, I just decided I wanted to change um in career and when I was growing up I kind of always wanted to be a teacher so I just said, oh, sure, why not? I'll give it a go. Um, applied for the PME, got accepted, didn't think I would. And then um, back studying now. How are you finding it now? Yeah, I find it weird yeah. um, because I wasn't exactly the best student at the start. So for the first time around, so um, like I'm in the middle of assignments at the moment and they have my head absolutely wrecked. <laughs> so um, 
I'm getting there, but uh, it's it's definitely an adjustment, and the, the teaching world versus the corporate world is very very different. Mm. So was was it a tough change to make? Um, was it a tough change to make? Uh, I knew that I wanted to leave um the job that I was in, um. Was it tough? It was really tough to do it because I like the actual physical process of handing in my notice was tough <laughs> because I get on really really well with the people that I worked with and like I love them still really good friends with them, but um no I knew that I wanted it to change but um it is very different like you're working with you know big budgets and big brands and now I'm working with teenage girls so <laughs> it's very different. And do you think? this is now your career path from here on or do you think you'll see another change um, down the line? No, well like for the moment, like I'm, I'm doing my degree and I have two years to do that so I've got like a third of, of my first year done um, but I'm still working in kind of the sponsorship space as well and, and a bit in PR so I'm part time here in the Educational Trust helping out with the communications side of things and With J.O. of course yeah, yeah, J.O. and I yeah, don't yeah, know our former guests we're flying the flag for the dubs in there and then I'm actually helping with the PR for the Dublin Hurling team so they had their first match last night so it's not all teaching I'm kind of doing both um, so it's very busy as you can imagine yeah well um, fair place to you for taking a bit yeah. of time out of your day then I imagine your your schedule is pretty hectic during the week yeah it's it's Tuesdays and Wednesdays are long days because I'm in work and then I'm in college until eight or half eight or whatever but um it's grand like I'm getting and there nearly Christmas is coming so yeah what are the hours like for uh, postgrad postgrad is just um it's like but seen as full time because you're you're on placement every other day well I'm meant to be there every day but I'm only there in Cabra, I believe is it yeah I mean yeah. Cabra, yeah um, well, I live myself Oh, is it yeah. oh, very nice. And um, well, I hope the girls are behaving themselves around that area. <laughs> um, but uh, it's yeah, it's I'm here till half three, and then I'm from college to four to eight. So very good. And it's probably gonna be even busier once training has training started yet. No, training hasn't started. So I'm actually back playing college football, which mm. I was swore to myself I wasn't going to do <laughs> but one of my good friends who actually works in DCU she works in the access office Fiona Hudson she was was a member of the Dublin team for you know for mm-hmm. forever really but um, she had to take a year because of an injury but um, she is part of the management team and she basically just handed me until I said yes so um, I've only played one game but I probably will be kind of limited time with the dubs until college is over but the whole team doesn't really go back until January we're going skiing first on our holiday oh, over Christmas lovely. and then Where, where's that to? Andorra oh nice <laughs> bit risky <Great>. but <laughs> no one gets injured <laughs> but um, yeah so I'll be back with Dublin after Christmas looking forward to going back in their batteries recharged yeah or? yeah it is yeah it's you know when you spend so much time with with the girls you're literally living in each other's pockets you'd be training four or five times a week and you're on to each other every other day and um, you do miss them so it's nice when everyone gets back together again and starts just buzzing off each other um so we'll get into a, a bit of football then okay so when did you start playing i suppose first of all um i started playing when i was six years of age and with the um, boys or the girls with the boys <laughs> and um my dad was involved with Rohini GAA club even though we were living in swords but that was his club so he used to bring myself and my brothers and sisters to Rohini every weekend for the nursery and then i kind of continued playing football um, and camogie for Rohini until i was about 15 or so and then got to a point where girls could no longer play with boys on the same team so i ended up um, moving to a team at home which is from Galleons so, um, also Fiona Hudson's also and, Fiona. and her significant other Paul Flint of course exactly yeah so Fiona's my club mate and so is Paul so we've had some well we've only had one really good day with Fingalians but hopefully next year yeah. <laughs> and you said that you played a bit of camogie was that ever a possibility or was it always kind of leaning towards football um, once you kind of start playing inter-county it's hard to manage any other sport really um, was, it, was it dual star ever on the on no the absolutely not I was <laughs> I wasn't that good at <laughs> Not that I'm saying that good at football, but I was definitely better at football than I was at, at camogie. But um, yeah, no, my sister was much better. She played camogie for Dublin. She was always better at camogie than I was. I used to always try and score kicking balls into the goals, so that was probably a sign. And that's your, be a footballer. That's your sister Claire then, is it? No, that's my older sister, Catherine. Okay. Claire actually never played camogie because she's didn't like the helmet. <laughs> <laughs> actually, that interesting. When I was about seven or eight, I gave up hurling for like two or three years because I used to get headaches because the helmet was too tight. Yeah, I head. think a lot of kids in nurseries now, they kind of 
one week you'll do football and the next yeah, week you'll yeah. do um, hurling and that kind of puts lots of kids off because they just they're a bit sensitive they don't like the helmet mm. and actually the only reason I went back is because after primary school my parents both worked so they couldn't collect me from school so I went back to my friend's house and stayed there yeah. until my parents finished work but my mum was running particularly late this one evening and my friend who did, was playing hurling was going training so I had no other option but to go to the field so we had a spare hurley and spare boots and I went to the field and played her and then Played all of that's that's not like, like your story. You, you had to go back to your friend's house, and God forbid you had to sit there or something for like an hour. My parents left me. <laughs> my dad forgot to collect me from a leash college's training in Balagala, which is like good, like fifteen miles from my house. Um, I walked home. My dad met me like halfway home, and I had pure stubbornness. I told no. And I, How I long did it take you? Um, it took me about two hours. But like we were after doing like it was it was like started the season and stuff, and we were after doing. Like two hours of basically like running and uh, then I just like walk home and like my dad met me I'd say about like two miles from home and I just said no and I uh, just had pure stubbornness and I walked home and uh, I refused to talk to him for like like a day I only lasted a day I was set on like a good month but <laughs> I just don't have the willpower for it um, yeah well I was 11 so yeah stop crying yeah I was like 13 or something okay whatever you what, like okay anyways <laughs> back to the more important yeah the uh, guests sorry sorry, 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 sorry in the room um, so when did um, you were playing football all the way up but when did it become a serious idea that you were wanted to play county or when did county first come calling um, I probably started playing county from under 12 um, and it, I wouldn't say it was specifically something that I always aspired to do it just kind of happened um, and then I really enjoyed it and, and my dad was involved kind of along the way and stuff and it's always the same group of girls that come up together and stuff like that. So you make friendships and you do really enjoy it. So it, I don't think it was something that I'd say, you know, when I was a kid, I was like, oh, I really want to play for Dublin. Like, it wasn't really like that. I just kind of, I was really? lucky enough that it happened. When I was a kid, I was like, I want to play for Leash. Really? Is yeah. that not the... What? Well, I think there's a difference in male and female because when we were younger, there was, like, the sport is quite new, so you didn't really have role models to look up to or there weren't ladies footballers that you could say, oh, I really want to be like her. And... There was nobody going to matches and that, so it wasn't like this big thing where you're going to Crow Park and you're playing and you're watching your idol playing. Like, it wasn't really like that. Like I really enjoyed it. I love getting out and um, made great friends, but it wasn't. It definitely wasn't a case where I was like, "That's I'm gonna do that someday." <laughs> and you're obviously coming off your uh, second. Yeah. Second yeah. All-Ireland. Thankfully, yeah. So um, um, like we played in the All Ireland final. 2014, 15, 16, got beaten by Cork each time, and it was only like a point or two points in it each time. Yeah, so there was foundations laid there for a yeah. few years, but then new management team came in last year, and they kind of elevated things like a little, like we were nearly there, but just tweaked a few little things, and um, thankfully got over that. And got the great news year. that they're continuing on, make a stay in for yeah, another for two, while for two years, and the rest of his team as well, because there's a lot of people behind him that do unbelievable work, like specifically with backs and forwards and that so even like psychology nutrition all that kind of stuff stats everything and um, so we're in great hands and um yeah it's great news that they're all staying on board on a on a personal level um because like you've mentioned that you had the disappointments in 14 15 16 mm-hmm. and now had the successes in 17 18 is it easier to come into a new season coming off the back of a victory or do you find the motivation of defeat uh, yeah, a better drive either course? way yeah. um it's a tough question um like when you win and when you've lost you kind of get to a point where you never want to go back to losing because the feeling of winning is so good um but i don't know if either are particularly more motivating than the other um like i play football because i really enjoy it i love being able to play at like the highest level and like i mean if you have a good game like there's there's actually or if the team have a good game there's like a no better feeling I'm just doing it because I love it and I, the, the girls that are there are a great bunch and it's a great environment to be in. It's very professional, and even though it's not professional, but it, it seems that way. So it's more that I'm doing it for those reasons as opposed to doing it because we've won. Mm. I know those people keep asking me about the three in the row. I'm like, I haven't even thought about that. <laughs> well, even I can't even think about going back training now. <laughs> <laughs> just this year. Uh, well, even the mentality when you're playing, like losing in 14, 15, 16, yeah. um, what changes do you think were made in terms of just the mentality of the team that got you to the final um, the win in 2017? Well, when Mick first came on board, it was kind of a, 
period of time where a lot of players say like older players like myself were kind of thinking like that's it that's mm. the end now and everyone was kind of thinking about packing it in and Mick met with us all and like it was fair to say that at that stage everybody was just really fed up with football yeah. because they were like but well, we've been doing everything that we can and we're still not we're still not beating Cork or whatever or, or winning and um, he met with I'd say I don't know how many people but I remember him saying when he met me that we were all wound, he described us as wounded, wounded birds <laughs> <laughs> and so from his, from his the beginning of his era he made a conscious effort for the first good few months to just focus on getting the enjoyment back into football so I think he made it easier for us to how, how does he go about that like how does one go about that like there, like I remember in some of the first sessions, there was things like where you, we all had a cup of tea after training, and we brought like baby photographs. Like, just like it didn't necessarily have to be on the pitch. It was just about enjoying being there for the first part, and then everything was like you know typical preseason training is dreaded because it's known for running or whatever. But he was doing like all football work, and he was really like like really properly focused on coaching, like so much coaching, like stopping people, telling them what they're doing wrong and like trying to get them to improve so it was just it was a different approach from the start then obviously after time like you had to get more serious and we weren't bringing having cups of teas after training <laughs> but like it, there was a good foundation laid from the start for, from the beginning of his, of his um time and just to talk about um ladies getting football in general it's yeah. coming off its best season yeah. you would have to say in terms of viewership participation stuff like that obviously the 2020 campaign is in full swing yeah any thoughts on that um, yeah, I think it's great. Um, like, w- when I was in PR, like I used to go to events all the time about women in sport and people were harping on about how we're not getting enough media coverage, blah, 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 not enough attendance at games, all that kind of stuff. But nobody seemed to be really kind of doing anything. But this campaign seems to like actually be actively trying to do something. Like, if you go on social media, like you'll at least see something about it every day. So um, it's good, but their their tagline "Can't see, it, can't be it" is so true. Like if you can't, it's like when I was growing up, I couldn't see. I didn't have role models because I couldn't see them. So, um, it's important I think for even just for things like obesity and like mental health troubles and stuff like that. And our like sports play such an important role in in kind of combating those things. So it's important that young girls or boys, whichever, can see um people that they can look up to so I think like we're very lucky in ladies football I feel like we're kind of a little bit ahead some, of some of the other sports because we have that partnership with TG Cahar like our games are shown on television so that gives us a chance to to be seen but um a lot of other sports maybe don't they're not as lucky as we are yeah well we had um Jenny Egan there at the um Olympic or yeah Olympic um canoeist mm-hmm. we, we had a bit of hopefully issue with hope, canoe, hopefully, canoeing Olymp- and, hopefully uh, yeah. Olympic um but um, she probably doesn't get as much. Yeah, like she was talking about her, but like her sport in general doesn't get very much cover. But she's saying that the twenty twenty campaign is um, making Helping huge strides. Promote, yeah, but that's great. Um, and like obviously, yeah, like ladies' Gaelic football has gone from strength to strength the past number of seasons, and uh, like the twenty twenty campaign has a fairly self explanatory goal to increase participation and viewership by twenty percent mm-hmm. by twenty twenty. But you personally, is there anything that you'd like to see uh, in a couple of years' time? Is there a landmark that you'd like to see past? Anything like that? A full crow <laughs> card stadium. Made. After the three <laughs> in a row, like, obviously. Yeah. Uh, three in a row. Uh, no. Um, like, standard of refereeing. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just feel like I sometimes... Do remember, yeah, I do remember. It's, it's, it's been very prominent uh, in the past few seasons in finals and such. Yeah, I just think, like, education in, like, the standard of refereeing like cause there's a lot of like I know there was like two years ago there was controversial finish to one of our All-Ireland finals where there was a point that wasn't a point and just like in in really big matches like that like that decide whether you win the All-Ireland or not it's mm. really important to have consistency so I think we had a case of that in the Camogie this year as well was there? I can't remember I'm fairly sure when Kil- were Kilkenny taken on court oh yeah it was, was yeah, yeah. but to be fair like to the LGFA they like we we met them and we, we discussed it and they um like they implemented Hawkeye then for next year so they, they did make a change but I just think yeah sometimes the consistency and in like, as right. you said though about you know it is the small margins and it can boil down to you know significant moments like that like I don't know it's been floated before but the likes of the VAR for GA yeah. and I know that the, like the LGFA are quite progressive probably in comparison to okay. their counterparts of the GA as well um, do you ever see 
that coming into a VAR. Is it what to the video analysis? Yeah, no, video assisted referee. Yeah. So like rugby. Yeah, yeah like you um, like the TMO is access to like, replays and things like that. Yeah. To be honest, I it would be great, but I I couldn't see that happening yeah. for a while. Like I think the men would probably have to lead the way, and then we'd probably have to follow suit. But mm. I it'd be great if we did have it because again it's a little it's it's help like a referee does genuinely have a hard job of trying oh, to yeah. keep control of the match and they're not going to get everything right like they are only human at the end of the day so mistakes will be made so just even to implement anything that would eradicate any mistakes that that because at the end of the day you put your life on hold for the year to in hope to win something and if it, if the decision is uh, an incorrect decision that goes down to like a mistake by a referee, um, it will be very handy to have someone else there to help out. And just to bring it back to DCU for one question, um, like, we, like we said, we had uh, Jenny Egan and we've also had the likes of Johnny Cooper and they've both been uh, alum here and uh, played sport here. Mm -hmm. And they talked about how DCU was great in facilitating both an academic life while achieving like your full potential in sport. Is that something that you found when you studied here? Um, to be honest, I wasn't, like I said this at the very <laughs> like I wasn't the best user, yeah. so I didn't really feel like I needed that support. But I do know that other people who are very involved in the academy and that have had great help from, from DCU in general, just because it, it is hard trying to get, like when you're, if you're in college, chances are you're playing club, county and college, um, and then trying to get your assignments and all that stuff done on top of that. And for the most part, you could have a part-time job as well. So like, that is a lot on your plate. Um, and you need to pass your exams. You need to pass your assignments. So, um, I know I, I like not for me personally, but for other people, I know that they're ha they have been helped out massively by um DCU in general. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, like you mentioned yourself, you are one of the uh, older members of the mm -hmm. the ladies squad. But do you? Come, you're not supposed to say things like that. Come on. You're not meant to comment yeah, on the like, ages. It's not <laughs> rearing on you at all. Your mother's kind of disappointed. Call him God. Um, okay, I'll <laughs> but uh, do you find from now, like coming even off coming successes, is it harder or easier to motivate yourself, motivate yourself at this stage in your career than maybe earlier in your career? Um, I think because I've had so much change in my life in the last few months with like, going back to college and changing jobs and starting teaching and taking on kind of side projects and stuff like that, I am very busy. So the thought of trying to manage all that on top of an intercounty training schedule is quite frightening yeah. in my head. But <laughs> it hasn't started yet. So um, the schedule came into our WhatsApp group the other day and I instantly was like, oh my God, I can't look at that. <laughs> and I, didn't, I still haven't looked at it <laughs> because I don't want to know what it is. So um, at the minute, I'm just living for Christmas and a break and then we're going to go on our holidays and have a great time. And I'm sure once all that's done, that's dust I, will, I, will, I will be. Oh, once I'm you, back, I just have to force myself to go at the start and then I'll be looking at it again. So you have to go for the three in a row. Yeah. <laughs> Do you find much difference between the younger players of the squad, as in how they're adapting to the senior squad compared to... They're coming viewing success, I suppose, whereas you've gone through the... Yeah, um, yeah, I suppose they're very lucky because they haven't had any hurt. There's, there's a kind of a... There's a group of about, I'd say, seven or eight girls that are the kind of the more senior, I'll call them, girls in the team, and they've been there for a long, long time, and, you know, they've, they've played for a long, long time, and all they've ever had is defeat, so the younger ones are really lucky, um, in the sense that they've never had to, they've never had to endure that, um, but just because they're younger doesn't mean they're, they, they're not leaders, like there's girls in there that have very big personalities mm -hmm. and, you know, could be bigger leaders on days than, than myself or anyone else, you know, the kind of way. I know they say that, like, defeat is, like, one of the best motivators to go and succeed, but it can't hurt, like, even in the ladies and especially, like, with the men's success, players coming in and they're used to winning. Yeah. They just, well, their breeds mentality. Yeah, so. a winning mentality has been bred into them from the moment they step foot on a senior football pitch. Yeah, I actually totally agree with that because um, Cork, they like they were the, the team that in my time we always had to beat and they, I think they won, was it like 11 All-Irelands in a row or yeah. so, something along those lines, something ridiculous anyway, but it was like there was one one final one year where like this is so embarrassing but like we were up by 10 points at halftime they came back 2013 by yeah but it's i used to say about them they just didn't know how to lose so for the younger girls in our panel at the minute yeah that 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 is great experience for them because it kind of gives you this attitude or nearly this i won't say cockiness but it is almost it like is, a cockiness yeah. where or a confidence where you're like okay we know how to win this we just got to stick to the process and see it through and and hope that it works but yeah, I do. That final did obviously stick to you because I remember reading an interview where it was coming towards the end of 2017's final mm -hmm. and some of the bench were starting to celebrate a little bit and get a bit, you know, 
Oh, this was last year. Was it? I think it was. I'm not sure if it was this year, or last year, but you were on the bench. Oh, and you yeah. said it's it's not over yet, and <laughs> they were like, "Come on, like we're ten points up, just two minutes to go." Yeah, it was like thirteen points or something. 13, 13 but I, points, well, yeah. I was freaked because I was just like, "Don't celebrate it's <laughs> over because we've been caught so many yeah, times." Exactly. But um, yeah, I yeah I I tore my calf like before that match and tr- like tried to play a bit of the match didn't really last very long, but um. Anyways, it was it's very difficult watching from the sideline. You know, when you're on the pitch, you kind of feel like you can, you have some sort of control. But if you're on the sideline, you can't you can't really do anything other than roar and then crow Park, They're not going to hear you. But um, yeah, the girl I was sitting next to, she was starting to celebrate, and I remember saying to her, "Stop celebrating," because <laughs> um, I was freaked. And uh, she was like, "You know, we're up by thirteen points. There's three minutes to go." we have this one like <laughs> and and even in that game like I know I know you came off for I think it was like 19 minutes or, yeah. or such um, you, you were American Cora Staunton yeah uh, I suppose in terms of ladies role models in, in the GA Cora certainly has to be up there for a lot for a lot of women yeah she's like a legendary yeah. in the game she's unbelievable and like even on a bad day she'll still shoot the lights out like but um, yeah but I suppose my injury was probably a blessing in the sense that all I was thinking about was my injury I wasn't thinking about marking her but whereas if I had been if I hadn't have been injured, I probably would have been over analyzing, marking her, and probably yeah. worked myself up into a ball of nerves. But um, yeah, she's great, and um, she's I think she's going back to Australia yeah. next year yeah, to play is. again. And I don't know if she'll be playing for Mayo next year. And but. that that's another thing actually, because you said that when you were growing up playing football, you didn't really have role models, but now mm-hmm. you have the likes of Cora and yourself. And, and I suppose Sarah Rowe has gone over to yeah. DC. So that's well. that's only going to help from what the game is that you have now these big figures. I mean. Like Cora's name is everywhere. Like she has her book out at the moment everywhere. It's my, cr- my, my Christmas present. Yeah, my you were saying yeah. actually. Yeah, um, yeah. It's f- flying off the shelves and work because I, I work in a bookshop back at oh. home. And like, but things like that, just having ladies Gaelic footballers everywhere is only going to help. Yeah, I think definitely going to help the new generation anyway. Yeah, yeah, well, even in the last like few years, like big brands have got involved in supporting. Like I'll only speak about ladies Gaelic football because that's the one I know most, but if you look at AIG they like any of the kind of promotion or advertising that they do they make sure they include all four codes yeah. um, if you look at Lidl they spend thousands There's of euros on national you know, okay. billboards all over Ireland yeah. with girls at club um, at club was it club college I can't remember club oh, they club have sorry there. secondary school and um, inter-county level so like they're making female footballers visible for young people to see so um, I think yeah, that's that's probably helping with it as well. And I, in Camogie, I suppose they have helmets on some of the time, so it's a bit harder for them <laughs> to get themselves. So actually, known. that's something I found. Like so, like I'll be in work, and one of my friends was like, "Oh, there's um so and so after walking in there, who's like oh, on like water, water, yeah. water panel, and I'm like where? Because I don't like I don't really don't know what they're nice yeah. Like I yeah. if they were out on the field and they had their helmet on and they were poking a ball, I'd know who they were. But up for up close. Yeah. The only person I did. Cop was Noel Connors. Oh, you were saying that. Are you your yeah. Waterford? Are you? Yeah, legs like tree trunks. That's the only <laughs> reason. Barrel. I, yeah, he's an <laughs> decent man. Um, any fun kind of questions on the football? Side? Yeah, no. I wanted to go back just to uh, the likes of Cora and Sarah going over and playing the yeah. the ladies Australian rules. Um, what what's it called? A- AFL. AFL. Well, what's it? L W L A F L or something. Um, oh, the actual organization. Yeah. I can't Anyways, remember. um, did you ever? I know, like, it was obviously a thing for men going over, and um, you know, even in the last couple of years and such. Did you ever see a point? I know, I know, it is only a new sport, of course, but did you ever? Um, for me, no. <laughs> Australia is too far away. But I think some <laughs> of the girls in the panel like have been approached to go to like combines and things like mm-hmm. that. To it's kind of like a, a day of trials. Yeah. yeah. Um more so our forward line as opposed to the full back line but um yeah uh i think like it would be interesting to go over and see what it's like to play in an environment that is professional um, and compare it to what we have here um, and it's a short season as well so you know you wouldn't have to go for that long but for me like I, like i'm probably i think I'm, i know core is older than i, I was going to say i knew what you were going <laughs> with that <laughs> but i i you know i'm very much a home bird i, I, I think okay. australia i just would that wouldn't appeal to me but for for i know for some of the girls on the team it does and they might do it in the next few years i don't know and did you actually see the tg carrier documentary on, on, on core oh you didn't see no, it no, and um, it was really good and she actually spoke about how you know being in an actual professional environment like yeah. as close as your respective intercounty setups can be to it being there and being full time yeah. professional athlete, yeah. it is completely different. Yeah. Did, did was that something like it, I know it wasn't really a possibility when you were coming up, but 
would that appeal to you now if you had an, an extra couple of years um, if you could wind back the clock the sunshine would appeal to me <laughs> and the uh, kind of not having 10 jobs at once to do would appeal to me the whole um being able to just concentrate on, on one, solely, on one thing, thing that would yeah. be your sole con- concentration but um like i think it's great and the, I'd say the girls that there's there's a, there's I think there's six or seven intercounty players that have gone over to, to well that will be going over mm-hmm. to play next year, and like they'll they'll pick up skills that will and they'll come back and they'll start playing here again and they'll probably develop our game even further so it's good for learning but for me I I just think Australia is too far <laughs> I know that's such a crap yeah. answer yeah. but I had a brother in Australia for about three years working and he'd be home every year and a half yeah. just of the distance yeah, yeah so. it's too far it is too far like um, realistically you're not going to get any visitors over there no <laughs> I did actually see um, on your Twitter that you tweeted something about don't look back in anger yeah are you an Oasis fan? I am as am I okay a big Oasis fan? yeah did you ever get to see them? I did oh did you not? No. no. Well, like, this I mean, perks of being we're too young. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would have been what nine when or ten, yeah, when they, uh, when they split up. So I didn't, I didn't get the chance. But where did you see them? I saw them in Slane and in Marley Park. Oh, um, twice. Yeah. I um, you know, like I have seen, I have seen Noel twice. I saw him in the Marquee and in um Trierina, and I've seen Liam in Malahide. Yeah. And me and Gab are going to see Noel in Malahide. Oh, in, very in good. May. That'll be brilliant. But yeah, no, I just thought of that um because. I do, I do like it when, when I, I come a, across another oasis. Yeah, from. when I was like, I'd say I was only like seven or eight. Like I used to have an oasis belly top. I used to <laughs> and like I was asking Santa for like Don't yeah. Go Back in Anger album. Like I was a big fan. So you're a big fan of oasis. Well, when I was, well, yeah. when you were, yeah. Well, I still love them. They're, yeah. I think they're great, but I, didn't I, get I back saw, I again. saw, uh, like Liam does this quite often, anyways. But like on Twitter, he was kind of just basically tweeting but it was just basically talking directly to Noel saying yeah. like stop messing around let's get this band back let's together let's get back together did um, you get a little flutter did you yeah well every time he does that I'm like come on just, just do it just do it but yeah. Noel is still Eve and I share the same birthday oh really wow. yeah, oh. There's, back to- <laughs> there's, a bit, there's a bit of trivia for you yeah um, any and, favourite musicians yeah. you did um, I have a very diverse taste in music like I love like Chance the Rapper and then mm-hmm. I could love like weird like Icelandic music. Like, <laughs> I, I I like I like a lot of different things. Mm. Uh, would be any music. Yeah, you play the dressing room for a game. Actually, okay. who's in charge of the the uh, aux cord or the Bluetooth speaker? So we actually have our stats man, who's a teacher in the school that I'm teaching in. His name is Shane Carney. He is jack of all trades. So he does our stats, but he's also a DJ. He's also okay. a teacher. He does loads of different things. <laughs> but like he's so is John Lockman. Yeah. He's, he's a teacher. Oh, yeah. He's a DJ. Yeah. He DJs at, at some of the girls' twenty first. <laughs> like he's done loads of stuff. But um, so he's in charge of our tunes. And to be fair to him, he does a very good job. Wow. What what would be in the mix now? Oh, it's all dance tunes, no oh, lyrics. Right. Like, yeah. yeah, just to get you. Yeah, more yeah. yeah. No, he's, he's yeah. very to be fair. He's very good. Yeah, and um, do you have any other interests? Hobbies, hobbies outside of these things that, that um, you're probably don't have much time for it, mind you. But like, I can play the bear on. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> we had um, I had Christmas dinner in my house on Friday night or on Saturday night with some of my friends, and we it, after dinner we had a few drinks and we did some karaoke. Naturally and enough. then after a while, I took the bear on out and I couldn't find the stick for the bear on, so I played it with a screwdriver. <laughs> yeah, that, that would work yeah, yeah the, it was, it's not a good night unless the trad music gets played so like, oh I was playing to like like see ya like I wasn't yeah. playing to trad music <laughs> okay. well the trad instruments at least um, any- well, aside, aside from um, from playing the bar on do you have any other hidden traits that we don't know about hidden traits um, I'm really bad at doing impressions okay, okay. Um, no I don't give, give, us, your, honest, give, I, give us your best Mick Bohan <laughs> or is that a bit controversial? No, it's not. I was trying to think of something that he says all the time. But we were on a team trip um last year. We went to Lynch um for like a bonding weekend and Mick gets these notions about some words and he says them like not in the right way. And anyways, we were training like every day, but we trained on the Saturday and on the Sunday we were playing a squad game. But he wanted us to drive the scenic route, so he wanted to bring us it was a fifteen minute drive. The normal way but he brought us for an hour and a half drive to take the scenic route that's very scenic <laughs> oh my god we were going to the burn like it was people actually you were puking because they got car oh, sick because the roads were so windy oh, no. but um he kept saying this is not really an impression but it's still something that he said that was very funny and we all slagged him about it but um 
kept saying, we're going to go the Senec route. <laughs> <laughs> like, Senec route? <laughs> I'm not quite sure what that is, Mick. Oh, very good. But, um, sure, a few quick fire questions, I guess. Uh, tea or coffee, Sinead? Neither. I don't drink either. Right. Oh. <laughs> what do you do for your caffeine rush? No, I Does just drink water. It. Oh, no. Yeah. The healthy option, I suppose. Uh, three guests, dead or alive, you'd invite to a dinner party. Um, dead or alive, do they have to be famous? Oh, no, it could be anybody. Whoever. Um, Goldie. Okay. Greg Kraft. Yeah. yeah. Um, who else would I bring? My friend Claire Collins, she's absolutely hilarious. She'd make you laugh. And one of my other friends, Claire Murtha. Okay. They're, they're probably boring answers. That's, uh, yeah. that's unusual now. Usually we get, you know, we get the odd mate, but generally mm. they go for... For celebs, I'm happy with my friends. Okay. <laughs> although, um, although um, Brian Dobson last week, well, we didn't ask him because he had already said it in an interview, but we did bring it up, and he said the only people that he bring to a dinner party are the most important women in his life: his mom, his wife, and his daughter. I probably oh, should have said my mom as well. Yeah. <laughs> I will, will like you well, too late now. She can be there. <laughs> um, lads, any final questions to wrap up? Are you all out, Greg? I'm all out. Yeah. Uh, best advice you've ever been given, or have passed on to someone else. Um, I always say you shouldn't compare yourself to every like anyone else. You should always just focus on your own strengths. So, like I think for younger girls, I was like, oh, that's the best girl on the team. But I think everyone has attributes that they give that makes a team work. So, don't compare yourself to anyone else. Do you think? Do you think we're like that, lads? We all have our own little. We bring something to the table. Yeah, we will. What do you bring? <laughs> the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Literally to the table. <laughs> he, he, he's honest. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. That uh, that's that's a good way to to end it. Um, Sinead, thanks Thank very you. much thanks, for guys. for coming Thank in. You. Um, yeah. good luck with your assignments. Thanks. 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 <laughs> good good luck with the the season ahead as well. When of it course. does eventually kick off, Thank we'll you. we'll keep an eye on. Good it. luck with the preseason also. Enjoy yeah. that one and enjoy the great skiing trip as well. I actually. Will. Hopefully um, <laughs> this has been in conversation with Sinead Finnegan with myself, Colin, and my co-host Gavin and Greg. Thank you very much for listening, and we'll see you next time.